Welcome back, guys. I just had to show you that to start. It's so fun. I have a cave spider spawner that we happened to find, I think, under a tree. Right above my black aurum. And I've put in some black dark glass, so we don't get light penetrating through this window here. And so if I'm standing in this room every so often, a cave spider spawns, gets killed by my arum, oh, or poisons me. I'm not too worried while I'm in my base about a little poison, though. Otherwise, that would be a problem. But yes, it spawns and makes us some dark essentia. No, ethereum. We've got 2,000 now. Not that that's very impressive over here in our celestial prism, which runs any time it's daylight. We've got, wow, 250,000 light essentia. Ethereum. Essence? I don't know. Ars Magic has changed the name of its magical power, and so I can't remember what exactly the name is supposed to be anymore. Today, we are going to work on getting automated mining. There's a block called a laser drill, and when it has a path down to bedrock, it will automatically generate ores, as if you had been mining. This is a really server resource efficient way to automatically generate ores. Many of the other ways involve huge, complicated mining rigs that load many chunks and move periodically. And that can really bring a server to its knees. The laser drill is a much more responsible way of doing this. So today we're going to, at the very least, set the groundwork for getting a working laser drill. One laser drill can't really do much on its own. For each laser drill, you can have up to four laser drill prechargers. These are what supply power to the laser drill. But to make these, you need pink slime balls. There's no crafting recipe for pink slime balls. They are a mob drop. They only drop from pink slimes. The only way to get pink slimes is to have liquid pink slime in the world. And the only way to get that is to use the slaughterhouse. So today, we are going to set up a machine to breed, grow, and slaughter cows, or pigs, or sheep, or any other livestock I decide to put in the machine. And we're doing this to get pink slime, although it will also get us a lot of meat which could be very helpful because, well, I have quite a bit of pork currently because I had to hunt a ton of pigs to get all the candles I needed for the Ars Magica rituals I did last episode. It could still be useful to have a more consistent supply of food. And since I'm growing all this wheat, I might as well upgrade it to meat, which is far tastier. So as this is our agricultural area, I am going to build our animal farm where all animals are considered equal. 
some are just more equal than others, right here. So you can see I've actually made ahead of time most of the blocks we're going to use. This is because crafting is boring, as we all know. I like it sometimes. Okay. The first block we will need is called the breeder. All of these machines are added by Mine Factory Reloaded, which is a pretty great mod. It's also what our planter and harvester come from. And, in fact, what the laser drill is going to come from. So, we are going to make a farm for animals. We're going to be compassionate about it, though. We're not just going to give them a tiny one by two space where we will let them grow to adulthood and kill them mercilessly. The space they get will be slightly larger at, I don't know, maybe three by three or five by five. We'll see how it looks when we lay it out here. Okay, there's the breeder, the first of the machines we will need. Next, we will need the chronotyper. One, two, three, four, five. I have to say, I do not know which side of the chronotyper is which. I'm going to assume I placed it the correct way. We might have to turn it. The breeder, pretty self-explanatory, is going to breed the animals to make more of them. The chronotyper grabs all the babies, shoots them out into this new area, moves them to the other side of it. One, two, three, four, five. Right here, we will put the slaughterhouse. The slaughterhouse will kill the animals. Oh. I misplaced. The quartz wrench only turns blocks, as far as I can tell. Ah, but these blocks just get broken by a pick, or in my case, a handy. Ugh, dig spell. If I can actually get it to work. Ah, goodness. So the disadvantage of the dig spell is that it involves right-clicking instead of left-clicking, so you have to be far enough away from a block with an inventory, and if you try shift right-clicking, it doesn't work because that just opens your spell book. This, by the way, is a spell book in which I put all of my spells. I still carry around my pick, but I'm not using it because I can conserve space by just having the single spell book down here. Okay. So, breeder is now the right distance away. Excellent. Here we have our slaughterhouse. Out of the slaughterhouse will come two fluids. One will be liquid meat. It will go to the meat packer, which will pack that meat up into delicious, nutritious meat ingots. They will enter an ME interface back into our AE system. The second fluid that will come out will be pink slime. Pink slime will go here to our portable tank. Although I suppose we won't actually be able to determine which goes where until we get a bucket of one or the other. 
So for the time being, I'll just put it like this. We'll add the tank once we have some production up and running. I also have a basic export bus that I will put here. This is going to export wheat into the breeder. And now for some fences. I suspect I'm going to need more. In fact, I know I'm going to need more. That's okay. I will get them in a second. Okay. Maybe I lied. I will probably raise all of the fences in this to too high fairly soon, just because I think it'll probably look better. But there we go, our preliminary farm. Each of these blocks should have a 5x5, five five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, yeah, a 5x5 five five area which is its range. And now we only need to run the conduits to each of these. Let's see, I want Dig this out. Okay, I'm going to connect up these conduits and then come right back. Okay, I've hooked everything up. I even put a lever here, ooh, to turn on and off the breeder. Let's set this to export wheat into the breeder. I'm, hmm, I'm a little surprised that that's not doing anything. I'm pretty sure the breeder can accept wheat from any side. Export wheat, the lever's off. I'm not sure what's happening there. Let's make sure everything has power. Okay, it does. Okay, one more test. Let's see if this interface is capable of taking items. It is not. Apparently I have not connected my AE system entirely. Let's see. Okay, so something is wrong past this point. I've connected that up all the way over. Oh, okay, I have it connected through a power relay, which doesn't actually, shockingly, it only connects the power of the AE system. It does not connect the, oh, what is it called? item transfer. Sure, that's a good name for it, the item transfer of the AE system. Okay, now this should be good. Filling with wheat. Now all we have to do is take our safari net and find some animals. 
I know there are some cows around here somewhere. I'm going to get a couple of each animal type. Some cows. Some pigs and some sheep. Maybe even a pair of chickens. Because why not? Okay, there we go. Cows should breed. Great. They have bred, produced a baby. Theoretically, up oh, and the chronotyper worked. Moved the baby into this area. Now, when the baby grows up, the slaughterhouse will come into play. Yes, it does do what you think. Let's get a few more animals. Here are some pigs. Now, theoretically, I'm only going to get the meat from these animals. I do not believe I will get any of the drops. But, well, a farmyard variety is always fun. Okay, the pigs should breed while we go off and get some chickens. Oh, and I'll even get a pair of mushrooms in a second. Okay, I'm going to go collect some of every animal, two of every animal, in fact, and then I will be right back. It is a veritable Noah's Ark of slaughter. There are a few things I want to do. So, one, I just remembered that pigs and chickens do not breed with wheat. So adding wheat here to the breeder will not cause them to produce offspring. Unfortunately for them, that means they can be our first experiments. And as you can see, business is booming. Oh, uh, but... I made a mistake. Okay. I didn't, I don't think, get any ingots from that, meat ingots. But that is because I did not slaughter enough. Let's go grab another animal. And I'll show you what happens when the slaughterhouse does its business. So, when the slaughterhouse kills an animal, it produces, oh, in this case, pink slime. It has a chance to produce pink slime and a chance to produce meat. We want pink slime to go here. So, well, for the time being, we'll leave it like this. Pink slime will accumulate in the tank, 
and the liquid meat will accumulate here in this tank. Hmm. Unfortunately, well, maybe what I'll do is get a different tank, get a bucket of the liquid meat, because that is more common. You normally get liquid meat, but rarely you'll get some pink slime. I need to set this up so that the pink slime will always go up, and the liquid meat will always go to the left here. And to do that, I want to add one to the white list and one to the black list. But yes, I will look into that. In the meantime, these guys are going to breed. I think I'll run out and collect some more livestock. And I will see you soon. And here we go. We have one bucket's worth of pink slime here in our tank. But... I don't think it's a good idea for us to just spawn a slime and kill it immediately. We have some other options. Here, first, let's see how this slime works. But apparently not, oops, right here. Let's spawn the slime here. And then I'll show you what we can do with it. So I've caught a pink slime here in my safari net. I will be right back when I have the materials necessary for my plan. Okay, I have the components I need. We're here in this random part of our basement near the agricultural district because what we are about to do will not be the permanent setup for this device. I just need some pink slime and don't want to wait for a bunch of pink slime to be produced by that grinder or slaughterhouse. So I am going to use the auto spawner. The auto spawner is another block added by MFR that allows you to make copies of any mob you have in a safari net. It takes power and a resource called mob essence. But when you supply it with both, it will produce large numbers of any mob that you put that safari net in for. Now you may be asking yourself, where did you get that mob essence? Well, you can actually use an item called an extractor to take it out of yourself and it actually consumes your experience when you do so. This worked pretty well, considering I just needed to make the one block and the extractor. Normally, and this is something that we will do actually quite soon, when I set up a room for the auto spawner, I also make sure to set up a system to automatically generate the mob essence. As I said, we will do that quite soon. But for now, we have all the pink slime we will need. So, 
time to construct the laser drill and its prechargers. Okay, we need a glowstone illuminator or one, two, three, four, five, six. Really? Okay, I am going to grind this redstone and make more of these illuminator frames, make the blocks we need for this, and I'll be right back. Okay, I now have everything I think I will need to get this laser drill working. We have the laser drill itself, pre-chargers, some energy conduit, tesseracts, which is how we will transfer the items and power to and from our base, and an interface. Let's set up the base facing side of this first. Here is what we will need. We will need one area, one block, where we can touch both power and an interface. But it cannot be next to another inventory. I believe this will work. So the interface here is connected up to our ME system. We have power here and this block has no inventory. So, when we place our Tesseract, we can right-click on it to open this inventory. What we will do is choose a channel, in this case one, give it a name, laser drill, And then we'll also set it to private owner only. So it is now set on the private channel one, late called laser drill. This tesseract is going to send power and receive items and fluids, though it will only be able to make use of items for now. Actually, I'm going to name this something different. I'm going to name this Base Main, because this is actually what we are going to want for almost everything coming into our base. We'll want to send power out and bring items in. We may have a specialized need for a different channel at some point, but for now this is going to be our main base channel. Now for setting up the laser drill itself. The laser drill needs a clear path to bedrock. But the higher you set it up, the higher the Y level is, the more effective it is. Up to a cap of about Y128. So, we are going to set our laser drill up on top of this mountain. Now I kind of want it to be a little higher up so that we can see the beam of it. 
This witchwood tree is in my way, though. Let's take this out. And then we can set up our laser drill here. Wow. Witchwood saplings are very rare. But there we go, there's one. Awesome. We'll clear some space here on the hill. Oops. And now determine exactly where we want it. I'm thinking kind of right here so that we can see it from the base. And let's just build up a few blocks. Let's check that from down below, see what it'll look like. It's going to make a bright beam. Yeah, that's great. That's exactly what I want. I want to be able to see the beam, but not have it extend too high up into the sky. Okay, so here in the center we will put our laser drill. Although actually I think that we can get a bug if we place our laser drill before we actually have a path all the way down to bedrock. So I am going to dig down to bedrock. Whoa, this dig spell can go very fast. Uh, let's shift its casting mode. And now I think it will cost less mana. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to dig all the way down to bedrock. And there it is. So, now that we have a hole to bedrock, we can place our laser drill. Okay, change to hover mode. Ah, and we see it makes a hole, or I'm sorry, a laser beam all the way down. Now we'll need to supply it with power and take the items from it. To do that... Hmm. Nope. Don't want this. We want base main. We want to send items, send fluids. I don't think it will get any fluids. And we want to receive power. Now, oh, you know what? I'm doing this with the wrong block. We'll need to set up our prechargers. The laser drill prechargers are what actually use the power and supply it to the drill. And they must be placed always one block away from the drill on the same level. Okay. Let's do this 
this way. We will use the power conduits to supply the power to the prechargers. And set them up. So that they supply power in turn to the laser drill. And there we go. These prechargers are now supplying energy to the laser drill, which is going to produce work, and each time it produces work, it's making an ore, and that ore is getting sent down into our AE system. Pretty cool. Let's see how it looks from down below. Yeah, I don't even see it from this far away. Oh, it's because of the cloud. Well, I guess we will see how it looks when the clouds pass out of the way. But I think that'll have to happen next episode. Oh, goodness. It is easily using all of the power generated by our reactor. That's no good. Okay, I think I'll have to put a battery up there or an energy cell in between the tesseract and the conduits to make sure that it has a limited supply of energy. But I'll do that between this episode and next. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I'll see you next time.